Hi guys! Today I'm talking about a topic that was um, inspired by a comment that I received two days ago and um, it's something I hadn't really thought about as being weird um, until I got asked that question a couple times and I thought that's actually a great topic to explain. Um, so when I go on walks on my own without Jordi present I will usually take either one of the dogs or both Mojo and Venus and the hunter usually I walk alone um, and people have been wondering why I don't th take all three and to me it makes so much sense not to walk with all three um, but there are quite a few reasons for it that I don't think most other dog owners might have if they don't have three crazy terriers um, and it mostly boils down to a combination of safety and training so today I thought I would explain why, when I walk, I don't take all three dogs along with me. So the video on which I received the comment the other day was filmed a couple months ago and that's when Hunter was a lot younger and training play played the main role for me not to take three dogs at once or to take Hunter in combination with other dogs at that time. So let's start with training. Now the first training focused reason why I don't walk all three at the same time is that they are all an individual, they are all different. Um, they are crazy high drive dogs, all three of them, but they have different issues or different things they want to focus on on a walk. And if I want to train on specific behavior or if I want to prevent anything from happening or any stress, it is easier to take one or two dogs and focus on their struggles and their specific focus areas than taking all three and having to divide my attention. It's basically setting myself up for success because I even, even though I know what all three dogs um, specifically struggle with or um, are working on, it is not as easy to focus on um, all three individuals at the same time when there are two or three stimuli around me like for example a running cat or barking dog and some birds flying by that happens from time to time um, and it's something that all three dogs will be uh, will get enthusiastic about or will have issues with or whatever um, suppose a child is running past that Mojo is afraid of, but also we see a cat on the other side and Venus starts screaming because she sees a cat. Um, I have learned to avoid this now because Venus is already almost four. Um, but if I were to also have Hunter in the picture at that point, he would get an overload of fear and stress and excitement and that would really, he would really feed off of that. So it easily gets very very chaotic if I am holding all three of these leashes but then I also want to focus on the dog that is still learning a lot at the time that the video was posted that this comment was left on Hunter was quite young still and at this time of course they're still shaping everything and I thought it wasn't clever to take Venus along on every single walk with him on my own or together with Jordi because he would be uh, I would not have the full focus on Hunter if I, if I were to do that alone, but also whatever he sees another dog do, he might copy it. So as a younger, as we have younger dogs in the household, I usually split most of the walks. And if we do a walk together with a puppy next to us, um, we will have one dog in one hand and a puppy in the other, other person's hand. Um, because then you're both independently responsible, but also capable of making changes when necessary, crossing the street when necessary. Uh, suppose one dog is pooping but the other dog is afraid of something or there's something coming in my direction or whatever, the other person can make changes, whereas that would not be possible if I was holding both leashes. Um, now Mojo and Venus of course, uh, Mojo has been with us for seven years almost and Venus for four um, and we start off walking both separately and then occasionally going on walks together and when Venus got older I finally decided when she was a year or so that I would also walk them on my own um, and that was, that was quite possible, that was quite okay. They're quite similar in many ways. It's not ideal though. If you were to have two uh, intense dogs like two Malinois or a Malinois and a Border Collie or a Stafford and a Mali or whatever and they are two very different individuals, it's not the easiest to walk them together training-wise. Keeping everything on track is not as easy. 
Then another thing that I really want to focus on um, most days or every other day is bonding time. And this means that I purposely take each dog out separately because I like to have a real interaction with them. If I'm walking two or three dogs, um, I'm focused on the surroundings and I'm focused on stress signals. I'm not focused on a one-to-one -one engagement um, and interactions with one of the dogs. But I find that there is such a difference in walking when I take only Mojo, only Venus and only Hunter. Um, and we can also work on some real obedience, some structured walks. Um, very good to learn uh, loose leash walking better than having another dog. Um, because they don't feed off of each other's energy as well, but also because I have only one dog to look at, one dog to think about. And we are just on a one-on-one -on -one trip at that point. Um, so um, that's, um, of course, I, th I think walking together is a great way to build a bond and um, that's why I'd like to incorporate that quite a lot. Um, and when we do um, walk, like for example in the mornings when we do a wa warm up walk before exercise, usually ta Jordi takes Hunter and I take the girls and we walk together. Uh, but Jordi also takes Hunter for walks separately, I take all the girls, both the girls uh, out separately. Um, but if there's three, three dogs present, there's always both of us and never just one of us. Now then, moving on to safety and training combined. Uh, just to be clear, I never ever do exercise with more than one dog at once. Unless it is tug of war, two dogs against one another holding toys. Um, then there's two people present, two dogs, um, and they are um, like tugging on two toys with a spring in the middle always focused on safety, the dogs can't reach one another, they're just playing a game. All other exercise, the dogs are uh, offered separately. So slap mill work, Mojo goes on the slap mill, she has fun, all the other dogs stay out of the garage. Uh, if I, we do spring pole work, that is usually separate. Sometimes Mojo and Hunter can have fun together, but I usually don't do that. Uh, one situation in which I really never do it is like flirt pole, fetch, extreme chasing exercise I don't want my other dogs around because they are all very high drive dogs and they might start to fight about whatever they are chasing and uh, to me that's not clever to do and that's fully safety focused and I mean it's not even why I don't take two dogs on a walk it's sports in this case but uh, yeah that's why I leave my dogs at home when we do exercise of some sort um, then just one dog's get, got, dog gets to join me but when it comes to walking terriers, or stuffed bull terriers in particular, um, of course there's more of a safety um, issue at hand uh, when it comes to approaching uh, off-leash dogs, um, and then I mean off-leash dogs approaching us, <laughs> not off us approaching other dogs of course, um, and uh, critters that run past, like I said, that's not just training focused, it's also a safety reason. Um, around here there's a leash law. I know that, for example, in the UK there is, a, there is not really a leash law in the country. There's just keep your dog under control or leash it. In the Netherlands that's not the case. Dogs have to be leashed. But barely any people oblige by it in the areas where they shoot. And 80% of the dogs that are off leash don't listen. So yeah, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, I keep saying it in all my sit-down videos. Uh, Originally, they were bred for gameness, and gameness basically means that the dog will keep biting no matter the consequences, even if the consequences mean pain, harm, or death. So these are quite strong and spicy dogs, and they are not supposed to touch a person, but they are supposed to bite other small animals and dogs. Um, now, of course, we could say that we have tried to eliminate that, but these are not show dogs, these are working bred dogs, these were bred for sports, um, so they were selected for their feisty tendencies, um, and that means that I have to be responsible. So that means that if I were to walk with three dogs and another dog were to approach me, I had no way of defending my dogs or the other dog. If I were to muzzle all three and walk them together, still, I would not be able to get another dog off. If I have two, I feel like I'm less limited in the options that I have. Um, if I have one, of course, I will just lift them over my head because they're not that heavy. <laughs> um, so yeah, safety, um, both 
um, focused on their behavior and other irresponsible dog owners, but also roaming cats that are that approach us for some reason. Um, <clears throat> that all comes into play when walking high drive intense dogs. These dogs are not for the faint of heart. These dogs are absolutely crazy. I love it, but not everyone does. Um, so to keep the dogs quiet, to keep the dogs calm, to keep them from biting whatever approaches them, it's easier to walk one or two than three. That said, they are very well trained. They are not reactive, and um, they are they they have never been in an incident. Um, but I don't think that I should risk it. I don't think that I should make it more difficult for myself. Um, and I could recommend it to everyone who is uh, considering getting a second or a third dog that um, first of all it will take more time uh, and uh, your dog will start copying behavior of the other dog that you have already um, so be prepared and be open to offer the other new dog solo walks and with that also comes that if you add a second dog to the family like we did and a third dog um, be aware that it will take away time from the attention that the other dog got so if you want to give the other dog that was there first the same amount of attention as you did before, I can re recommend all those solo walks because that's kind of some me time, some togetherness with uh, that first dog. And um, it's very different, you'll experience that. It's very different walking more dogs together than just one. <laughs> They have been so cooperative today, that's very unique. Uh, I switched the sofa around because there's a window behind where, it usually, where it's usually placed. Um, so I can't really film in any other area um, that has good lighting. And I was like, okay, let me switch the sofa around for filming. And then we can have all dogs in there as well. And they have been so good. It's quite cold in the house, so they're huddling up because of that. Um, yeah, and uh, so thank you to the person who um, left that comment. I don't have my phone on me, so I can't find the name. Um, and uh, I know that you said that you are um, interested to learn more about my dogs. Um, so, uh, of course, you learned some, a thing or two because um, I explained how crazy they are and uh, some of their issues. Um, but yeah, to those of you who are new and are still watching, this is Hunter. He's just over a year old. This is Venus, she's his mother. Last year she um, had a litter for a sports kennel that she came from and uh, we raised the puppies in our house and this one stayed. Because it was born with a cleft lip and I couldn't say goodbye uh, after weeks of uh, helping him survive. And then this is Mojo, she joined us in January, almost seven years ago. She will celebrate her seventh birthday next week uh, Venus will turn four in summer in January, the 19th, I think, and Hunter uh, turned one on September 9th. Hunter used to be super focused on birds as he was a small puppy, and um, that kind of subdued. Right now he can ignore like crows and magpies from quite up close. Um, but. Um, over the past months he has been approached by off-leash dogs unwantedly a couple times so his excitement towards uh, other dogs when passing is increased so that's what we are working on with Hunter Mojo uh, well she's seven I mean we uh, know her uh, but we always work on passing children without fear um, because when we lived in Amsterdam there were quite some bullies around that kept barking at her when we walked past and that kept screaming or running after us or um, yeah that's something she didn't like and Venus then kind of starts protecting her, starts barking and that kind of riled up Mojo's enthusiasm more. Um, of course in that case as well it would be easier if Jordi was walking one dog, I was walking the other so we could separate split ways or whatever um, but that wasn't uh, possible because I was walking both um, so that had a lot of effect on Mojo. Um, uh, but she is easy to walk with uh, on her own and she's quite okay walking just with other dogs. She's very easy going. Um, and Venus, um, she's most feisty towards small critters, small game and cats. Um, so you cannot uh, see a cat 
in the same approximate area as Venus without hearing her screams. Um, I don't mind, that's what they were bred for. I knew that that's something we got, we, we put ourselves into when we bought her, of course, because we already had one. Um, yeah, these dogs are terriers, they were bred to hunt, to bite, to chase. Um, that's something uh, I knew, but that's something that some people might not know. They're super friendly dogs, they love people, and uh, Venus, I think, is uh, the one that people like the most. She doesn't really jump up onto you, but she does really like the attention. Um, she doesn't really push her body weight against you uh, when asking for attention, like, she wouldn't ever jump against someone, which is nice. So yeah, overall, these dogs are amazing. I, um, I really like having this breed. I love how much they love people. I love how much they love uh, being around us as a family. Um, what I wish they didn't want was interactions with everyone and everything. Um, to me, they are too excited whilst, for example, being on the road. Um, that's why when training um, the first couple of years we don't let other people touch them because um, it will create an expectation for the future and that's quite annoying i have a video on that as well um, so yeah that's um that's how these dogs are and i might do a video on every dog separately one time so that you can learn about them because um yeah that should be fun um so yeah, that's it. I hope that you liked it, that it was interesting, and um, if there's any other questions you have on um, walking them separately and how I do it, like what gear we use and what I bring on walks, then definitely let me know. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, so for now, have fun with your dogs this week, and we will see you again on Sunday. I have no clue with what type of a video, but you will see soon enough. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.